Moby Dick is a true American classic. Herman Melville's rich, textured prose captures the romance of the sea as well as the camaraderie of the human spirit. Moby Dick is much more than the story of a whale. It is a treatise on man's place in the universe. Here now is Moby Dick in exactly one minute. Call me Ishmael. And so our great adventure begins. Ishmael is trying to kill. He's bored. He's broke. Have it a trip to see. Why not? First stop, New Bedford. The weather's crummy. He's beaten all the ends of book solid. So he shares a room with a harpoon hurtling a heathen named Creequeg. Now the best of friends, they decide to ship out together. But first, it's off to Nantucket for more clam chowder. Finally, they set sail for three long and boring years at sea. Drive them out, man. The cup stands. Stow the chowder. Then Captain Ahab appears on deck. He's handicapped. Only has one leg. It seems this big fish got the other one. He yells at his crew, Find me that fish, the one they call Moby Dick. That's the one that's big and white and mean. And so the Pequod sails around Cape Horn. Ahab paces the deck. He yells at every passing ship, Have you seen the Great White? Next is off to the Pacific. Ahab keeps pacing the deck as the ship sails on and on and on and on through hundreds of pages of painfully padded pathetic paragraphs. Have you seen the Great White? And another year goes by, and then the lookout yells, Dar, she blows! It's big, it's white, it's mean, it's Moby Dick! They all hop into the dinghies and they woe for days, but Moby gets away, then a typhoon hits. <laughs> The sails get ripped to shreds and they all get wet. Then the lookout yells, Darcy blows again. Back into the dinghies this time, they harpoon the heck out of Moby, which really gets a mad. So Moby munches a few men, bashes a few boats, punches the Pequod, gives Ahab a ride, and everybody dies. But the fish and Ish 